G'day, this is Passionate Permie Dillon and I'm taking you on a tour of the developing homestead at Lynnhaven. This is a small sheep farm that we, Passionate Permies, Evita and I, have purchased. We settled in October last year and since then we've had access to this one paddock that I'm going to walk you through now. We're just coming up the driveway that we had built and what we have done is on the right hand side we have sown a very diverse cover crop the local contractors came put that in oh, sometime in December I think it actually went in it's grown really well have a look what in, what's in there it's basically oats as the main cereal then the sunflower the purple flower is vetch there's daikon radish which has now got the seed pods on it. There's this beautiful crimson clover. There's uh, buckwheat. So that's buckwheat just over here. Uh, there's vetch that I think I've already said. And some sunflowers, of course you can see them. And I planted a whole lot of other seeds in there. Some of them might not have come through, but some of them might come through later. Like there's some peas and a few cheer and probably another kind of clover. It's quite a few. It grew really nice. We've had quite a moist summer, so everything's grown well. Today's a beautiful sunny day. We've had a lot of rain and cloud and not so much sun. On the left hand side, we have used or planted the berm that was created from all the topsoil that came out of this track. The um, earthwork, I put it in a mound and pretty much on the same day or the day after in the next couple of days I walked along it and put out lots and lots of seeds. Chia was probably the predominant one that I had at hand. Um, but also on that other side of the mound because it's quite protected we've planted a large patch of potatoes all the way up to here. Then there's some Jerusalem artichoke, there's some yams as well, and then further up there's camel camel, which is a type of pumpkin. We tried a little bit of corn, didn't really grow that well. And then up near the top, I've done a combination of vegetable gardens as well as herbs. I did buy in quite a significant amount of plants, pretty much three of every kind of plant that this nursery had, a friend of ours that lives in Riverton. She grows really nice kind of permaculture plants, I guess. Lots of herbs, some vegetable seedlings, and also trees. So we'll see some of the trees that I planted from her. And those will become my kind of stock of plants that I can take cuttings from when I get into propagating more of these plants to plant around the whole property. What else did I plant on the mound? Lots of rockets. So all this white flower that you can see, that's rocket that also came up in my cover crop on this side. And then there's been volunteers, like Fat Hen has just come by itself. Um, I think there's probably some clover in there. We put in quite a lot of flax seed. So I think there's, well it's actually linseed. So I think there's some of them. We put in lots of lettuce. Um, the orange and yellow flowers you'll see are calendula. And we've been harvesting lettuce because it's just grown. That was harvested probably last week. That one's ready for harvest tomorrow. Nice calendula there. Um, this is our friend Chia. And we've been harvesting that as well for tea. And we've dried a whole lot. And we'll be selling the tea hopefully this weekend at the harvest festival. There's a there's a pea. Nice white flower there. Beautiful tendrils. And so it was turned basically into this big earth mound into quite a productive, thriving diversity of plants that covered the soil. And where there were patches where nothing did take, that's the part we've planted a few things on. That's also where there's some rabbit activity. But in those little patches we can plant some seeds or seedlings as well. 
there's a bit, some some oats has cut, drifted across here as well. So there's a few oat plants. Uh, at the moment we're very well encouraged by how well everything's grown partly due to having quite a moist summer so we've been blessed in that way and yeah there's an abundance here already perhaps it's also just because the soil has been disturbed and therefore there's a death of biology that happens and that feeds the soil And so this is kind of, that's just behind this Kai's kind of where the paddock ends. And so there's a bit of a turning circle <coughs> and then there's an old super bin over here. I was going to build some kind of small cabin here, but in the end I was talked out of it. And then by chance this tiny house came up for sale in Riverton it wasn't too far from us and so that's the tiny house that we've then bought and we're preparing to put a deck out the front of it to connect to it I'll show you that a bit later on so <clears throat> this was an old super bin where they put super phosphate in and they used to fly it around onto the farms from here this is a biodigester it's not producing gas yet because it's not warm enough but where we're standing is going to be inside a greenhouse and so then it will get hot I've just set it up as um, something to do so far we had it get it set up it's ready it's waiting when it gets a bit of heat then it will start producing biogas that we will then use to cook on this piece of wood is on the top just to stop so much rain from filling up the top of it and pushing out the liquid I could do another video on that at some stage if anyone's interested. So we've been collecting some resources. We've created two water tanks here on the side of the tiny house. So they are 1000 litre IBC containers. And we just took old iron, cut it up into the right sizes and screwed it on. Idea being that we block out all the sun that does two things it improves your water quality so you're not drinking plastic leached water and it stops algae from growing and it makes the tanks last longer probably three functions there there's going to be a compost toilet here and in front of us this is still the cover crop and this is our second kind of the third helper we've had and he stayed here Ready for five weeks. Hello everybody. That's Zach from France. And <clears throat> a quick look inside the tiny house. It's a bit of a mess, but we're not living in here yet. So there's a bed frame that I built for the bedroom. It's got quite a high rounded roof. And then it's got a kitchen. And through there there's a basin, toilet, and shower. Yeah. So it's kind of getting ready, we're getting it ready to, to move up here. So the water system's almost ready. Then we're going to be building the deck and the solar system will go up on top of the deck roof. And then we'll use that for power and then we will have, you know, power to run the water pump and everything like that. So this is the little garden that I planted while Levita was away in Taiwan. So when she came back we'd have some food to eat from the land and she was chuffed with that and I like it because it's really diverse and a bit wild looking but there is a lot of food here and a lot of different plants I'm probably not going to go through and name all of them hopefully you can recognize obvious ones like echinacea but there's rocket perennial rocket as well as the other annual rocket there's tomatoes there's bit of corn there's all sorts and so we have little pathways that we can walk through mostly down the one side <clears throat> you can see here tagasustes growing with comfrey around it because eventually this is not this is not going to be our main growing food area 
the top of the cover crop will probably be where we grow most of our food in the future so this will be more of a shelter belt or a sort of just a diverse planting of different things and basically what I did is just made these little terrace gardens down for growing food and I like to plant diverse so there's a couple of rows of uh, carrots with some parsley, broadleaf parsley in between and then courgette then the next little bed down there's spring onions radish in the middle the next one's got the wombok next to some oh I don't even know what that is some radish or something this one's got a lysium, fl lysium flower some beans some courgette there's a native plant in there then broad beans or radish some marigolds on the edge so we like to make it diverse and then going down here every two meters there's a plant and every four meters there's a tree and that hopefully over time will continue all the way down and the mound will also have probably one or two plants on the edge and one or two on the top yeah and so then this is the reason why we decided to put a tiny house up here it was only another 250 meters of track extension we can see this little pond that's the nail that's the fence there the fence line there and in the winter this all those mountains there will be covered in snow so the view is amazing and kind of the corner of the property is up by the bottom of those trees and then it goes all the way around and maybe you can see below this line of trees is the first forestry block that was cleared early in the year but it's greened up a bit stuff's coming back and then it's hard to see where the property goes but it goes uh, across there a few few of those hills and then to the left of these trees over here and it goes back down the road goes out to the road along here and there's two big sheds down there and we're living in one of those sheds temporarily so that's kind of where we are at at the moment after what is it nearly five months things have been a little bit slow but of course we've been doing a huge number of different jobs that need to be done and um, yeah we're also trying to do it on a budget so that's always more difficult and there's one more pan Yeah, we started one little veggie garden here with carrots and parsnips. And yeah, when that cover crop finishes off, our gardens will probably terrace further down that way. And the cover crop's there to build the soil. Hopefully we, we might get some animals in there to feed off it. Maybe a couple of pigs, ducks and chickens. Uh, maybe even goats would love to eat all that. So it's kind of ready to be eaten. So yeah, we'll see what we can get soon. Alright, that's it. Goodbye.